There's really cool loot in Hogwarts Legacy. I want to tell you how the system works as well. What happens when you fall off a cliff? We got broom flight controls and way, way more important info that is handy to know before you start playing yourself. So, of course, if you are excited and like the contents that we put out here on the channel, then leave a like. That would really show your support. Subscribe for way more Hogwarts Legacy videos and let's go. Real quick, there is, by the way, still time to enter my Digital Deluxe Edition giveaway for a platform of your choice. You have to be a subscriber of the channel, though, if if you want to enter good luck yes this is a brand new cutscene that was shown on sci-fi wire as shared by hogwarts legacy world on twitter here we see our hufflepuff companion poppy summon the white hippogriff high wing after which we try to tame it the footage was ripped from twitter so that's why the quality is not great but it's still a really nice scene and i personally think that it's from early in the game so that after this we get our first mount and that you then also immediately get access to the black onyx hippogriff which is of course a pre-order bonus like usually you unlock these bonuses very early on so i think it would make sense and this mount can of course be used as a regular ground mount or to fly around although worth noting is that your broom will be faster for flying there are three upgrades for your broom while i don't think there are any for the regular mounts in the game these upgrades can by the way be unlocked after helping out the spin to which a sporting shopkeeper in hogsmeade while the broom items that this shop owner will be selling should be purely cosmetic. And we, by the way, quickly saw the broom PlayStation controls during a video from Wizard World while doing Revelio on the broom. So it turns out that there was a speed burst that nobody told me about. And you can use R2 as you would expect for a regular flight. Pressing L3 also impacts the flight speed. And descending, of course, happens with the right stick. And as you might know, there's this yellow bar, which depletes the higher you go. And with the upgrades I just mentioned, you can make it so that the bar depletes less quickly. While if you stay close to the ground, the bar will not be depleted and you can actually move a bit faster. And then with circle, you can dismount, although not everywhere. You can do it above water and then just fall in the water or from higher up. And then you will probably die. So Wizard PhD actually tried jumping off a cliff for science. I think she's the only one who actually tried this, which is kind of awesome. So when you do this, a quick time event will pop up. And if you then fail to press the right button, you have to restart from checkpoint. So yeah, there's no falling animation, sadly. And this quick time event is, of course, similar to when an enemy costs a Levioso. If you then press the right button, you are free. While otherwise, you're stuck in the air for longer. So you mostly just want to roll away when you see the red halo icon over your character. Now, let's go over something I found while looking at recent Room of Requirement gameplay. We, of course, mostly have seen one of the Vivariums. But we know there are at least two more of them, so we can keep multiple types of beasts. And it seems like the main way to get these creatures is to rescue them in the open world. And overall, this whole room of requirement, like we've seen some gameplay here and there, but it also feels that we barely scratched the surface compared also to what we saw in the state of play from earlier. Should be a really big feature. And by the way, I looked at that second gameplay showcase again and the spells that were used to actually move things around and change things in the room of requirement. Look at their icon and color and then check the full spell menu i showed you before they're right there as slottable spells so quite a few of the 23 slottable spells do not have a use in combat just like lumos and reparo trust me i used reparo by accident during a fight which basically meant that my character was stuck in an animation for a short time. We know that you will eventually get four of these spell wheels, so can slot 16 spells in total, which means that it's likely smart to put your Room of Requirement spells in one wheel, while the other wheels are focused on combat. And speaking of combat spells, we know you can upgrade them with talents, so you can improve their effectiveness, and I was able to try a very strong variant of the Crucio Curse. So when you cast it on an enemy, it will deal damage over time, and as we saw in the second gameplay showcase if you then follow up with other spells on that same enemy nothing strange will happen but when i did crucio on an enemy and followed up with the basic shots the bolts would bounce from the enemy to nearby targets dealing a ton of extra damage it seems to just go to random nearby enemies but it should be really powerful when clearing a room especially if you drop the curse on a high health target so then you can attack them even more and have more of these bouncing bolts so yeah i totally think that's an upgrade and another talent we touched on before is that ring of fire of course to the incendio when i used it during my gameplay it just was like this fire in front of you 
While of course in other footage we saw this ring of fire as well. Now going back to this one year old state of play footage. As we here see 8 upgrades for the room of requirements. 4 for stealth, 17 for core. Counting everything together, it seems that you need 50 talent points to unlock everything. And it seems that you only get a talent point after leveling up, with 40 probably being the max level looking at the trophy and achievements we can earn. So that would mean that we miss 10 points to get everything. So we have to be smart with how we spend those points. Now let's touch on the loot that I already talked about in the intro. The ceramic mask for example that Power Limited discovered and it probably looks really cool on our character. This was in the spot where I got the sun head by the way. Giving some Assassin's Creed Odyssey throwbacks, if you know, you know. And yeah, just like in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the gear drops in Hogwarts Legacy are completely random. It's also possible that you only get gold or a potion from the back or chest that gave another person a piece of equipment. And certain enemies, especially from a higher rank, also seem more likely to drop loot. And what is interesting is that Craze Gaming and any Reloads in their gameplay found unidentified items, which I did not. These drops are interesting as you will only see which type of item it is and what the rarity is before you know what the actual piece of equipment will be. Now real quick we of course got green, blue called superb, purple is extraordinary and orange is legendary and by going back to the identification station in the room of requirements which is one of the first things you will make you can identify these items and then use them and I'm curious if these are special or better items that you cannot find elsewhere. Now of course you can rock any outfit without it impacting your stats. Transmog is in Hogwarts legacy and the reloads was able to confirm that it will not cost a currency to change items like going back to odyssey because it's basically the transmog system from that game so you hover over a gear piece in your inventory press square and they can pick the look of other items from that same category and also just like in odyssey it seems that every item that you pick up will then be saved so you can always use their look even if you don't like the stats now next to regular gear items there are also collections and i I think these are cosmetic only so their look can only be selected in the transmog system it seems like these are rewards from certain missions where for example here you have to bring this moth with lumos to the painting close by and when you do that you get this special outfit collection this reward is by the way the same for everyone so everyone who does this mission gets this outfit and by the way one more thing about the outfits and this is actually something from Valhalla you can namely unshow a piece of equipment so hover over the thing you don't want to show and then you still have the stats but then you don't see it on your character I actually did this for the cloak in the puppy mission so you only see the shirt which I think is kind of cool now subscribe of course for way more Hogwarts Legacy again this is just the start we will have way more spoiler free tips and tricks coming your way very soon a like on the video would really help me out and check out our previous Hogwarts video by clicking on the screen. I will speak to you soon. Goodbye.